This is the Berman Method podcast featuring Dr. Jake Berman and physician assistant Jenny Berman. We are here to treat problems and not symptoms. Disclaimer, this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and not to treat anyone or to give medical advice. If you are interested in any information that we are giving and would like to use this for yourself, we recommend that you contact your primary care physician or reach out to us and ask us questions about yourself specifically. Enjoy. And we are back. How's that for some high pitches there? Pitch perfect. Seven, here I come. (laughs) The Berman Method podcast where we're focused on treating problems and not symptoms. We do not believe Western medicine, big pharma has your best interests in mind. We believe that they are focused on client retention and not curation. And we prove that with every single pharmaceutical has at least one side effect that requires another pharmaceutical to treat that side effect and so on and so forth. Dr. Jake Berman here with my beautiful co-host. Jenny Berman, physician assistant. What is happening, JBB? You see it. (laughs) Happy Monday, everybody. Hopefully you're listening to this on Monday, starting your week off on the right note. Yes. So We both just got done doing some burpees and push-ups and squat jumps because we are all jacked up for this episode. Hoorah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Just a quick recap. If you did not listen to last week's episode... Please go back and listen to last week's episode. We actually referenced another podcast for most of the episode. It was Brigham Brewers. He's the owner, founder of Ways to Well, which is a clinical compounding pharmacy out in Austin, Texas. And he was the guest on the Joe Rogan podcast. So please go back and listen to it. It is one of the best uses of your three hours. It is a three hour podcast. However, oh my goodness, does he expose some things that are happening to you every single day? And it's all fact checked. It's all got references. Yes. Very good podcast. We've, I know you've listened to it more times than I have, but I've listened to it now a couple of times. We, I have sent it to my staff to listen to. So we've been chatting a lot about it within the office as well. Yeah. He's essentially saying the same stuff that we've been talking about for two years now. We've been doing this for two years. I think so. Almost three years. Yeah. Are we going on three? Not yet. Not yet, but I think we're hitting that two year mark. Yeah, so it's the same thing that we've been saying for two years now, and it's just said from somebody completely different, so it's nice to hear the same thing said by somebody else. But more importantly, it's all fact-checked. You can reference every single thing that he says for the entire three hours versus what we say on this podcast. This is just like my opinion, man. Right. If there's any big Lebowski fans out there. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So we say everything based on... Uh, our opinion, however... Our own research. Our own research, right. Exactly. I was just going to say that. So yes, we do our own research and I'm researching all the time. And in fact, I've already mentioned that I'm doing a fellowship through the Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, so A4M. So we're doing a lot of our own type of research, but at the end of the day, if we're saying it without posting our references, then it's our opinion. Yeah, it's our opinion. Take it as you will. Yeah. Not used to treat you or to tell you what to do. You should always consult the right provider to talk about you specifically. And that kind of gets into what we're going to talk about today is who is the right provider? How do you know what the right provider is? How do you start? How does everybody, or let's say it this way, how does 95 plus percent of Americans start to find the right provider? Google? No. Oh, uh, primary care? Yeah. See their primary care and how then... do they f- How do they find their primary care? Oh, the insurance tells them who to see. Yes. Are they in network? Right. Are they in your network? <laughs> yeah. That's how 95 plus percent of Americans start to find the quote unquote right provider. You're being told who the right provider is by... 
your insurance company. The insurance company who's... (laughs) What are they thinking about? Whose interests is your insurance company thinking about? Are they thinking about you, the patient? No, their own, making money. They're thinking about profits because that has been proven time and time again over the past 50 plus years Insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies will time and time again choose profits over patient outcomes. Right, right. So you go in on your insurance, figure out who's in your network, then you get a list of the people in your network and you look at them geographically to see who's closest to you. And then you might check the Google reviews and see if it's good or bad. But a lot of times, it doesn't really matter what the Google review is. You get three choices of who you're going to go see, and you're probably going to pick the one that's the closest. I tell you, I'll tell you what. I mean, over the past, I don't know, I guess I've been doing this eight years now, Berman Physical Therapy, eight years now. I cannot tell you how many times I'll get a call from a brand new lead, a brand new potential client. I say, how did you find me? They said, Google. And I'm going, okay, when you type in Physical Therapy Naples, Florida and Google, 11 billion physical therapy clinics pop up. And I say, why did you choose me? And the answer is always 50-50. Or I don't know, I guess I should look it up. I think it's close to 50-50. 50% of them say, well, you're close to me. And I'm going, really? Mm -hmm. That's the reason why you called me? Because I'm close to you? Mm -hmm. Because again, if you're not familiar with Naples, Naples is a small town. You can drive from the tip of Marco Island to Fort Myers in less than an hour. Right, right. I mean, that's small. Right, whereas in Jacksonville, it takes you 45 minutes to get anywhere. Yeah. I mean, from one neighborhood to the next neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. 50% of the people say, I, cl- I called you because you're close to me, but the other 50% say, I, called, I Googled physical therapy, you popped up, and I said, okay, why'd you call me? They said, well, you had the best reviews. I'm like, okay, so you actually did a little research. You actually at least somewhat care what other people think about proven track records. Right, exactly, exactly. But that's, like you said, not always the case. And then the the thing comes down to, do you take my insurance? That's the very next question they ask you when you pick up the phone. Because they're used to physical therapy being covered by insurance. They're used to it being covered by insurance, but it goes deeper than that. It goes much, much deeper than that on a psychological level. And this is what I coach my staff on year after year after year, that people ask that. That's the first question that people ask because they don't know how to ask, are you the right place to help me with my specific problem? Right. Well, you know... Being out of network and more concierge-like, quote unquote, because that's what they're they're called now, wasn't a thing five or eight years ago. I mean, you were the very first out of network clinic, physical therapy clinic to come to Naples. And at that time, or to open in Naples, at that time, concierge primary cares weren't even a big thing. I think there were like two in town that were did concierge medicine. And even me being in Western medicine was like, Who's going to pay for that? Now look at us, number one. But number two, now there's tons of concierge physicians in Naples as far as primary care goes. I love it. Absolutely love it. And we could spend an hour talking on each one of these touch points to go back to what you just said there. When I first opened in 2015, I know for a fact that there was not more than five concierge doctors in this town. And I know for a fact that I was the only one that was 100% out of network with all insurances, only physical therapy clinic. Fast forward to today, the majority of the good physicians our concierge in this town. We're not even talking 10 years later. Right. And that's even not just for primary care. I mean, the good cardiologists in this town are going, are concierge now. The great endocrinologists in town are, which there's not many endocrinologists in all of Naples or Fort Myers are concierge now, which is putting a lot of people in a, a tough situation where they're like, well, my endocrinologist just went concierge. Now what do I do? And that's where we have to have the conversation of you have to pay for your health. You have to invest in your own health. And 
if your insurance isn't going to give you get you to the right person, then you might have to invest a little bit more. Not might. You, you do. have to. You do, yes. You have to. That was one of the biggest take-home messages that I wanted people to get from last week's episode with the Ways to Well references is he said the quote on there, and I'm taking this and I'm running with it forever. He goes, you have to look at health insurance like car insurance. Car insurance is only there for that catastrophic accident. Health insurance is only there for that catastrophic accident. Car insurance is not going to pay for your oil change. They're not going to pay for you to get your tires rotated. They're not going to pay to change your air filter. They're not going to pay for those things. But you pay for them because you want to keep your car running as good as possible for as long as possible. You don't even think about it. Right. Same thing with your house. It's the same exact thing with your house. Right, right. You've got home insurance that covers Hurricane Ian, or mm -hmm. at least that's probably a sore subject because I know a lot of people didn't have coverage, but just go big picture. You've got home insurance to cover floods, hurricanes, catastrophic events. Mm -hmm. You don't have home insurance to pay for your AC service. Right, right. Or right? the handle on your microwave breaking <laughs> yeah, you <don't, laughs> that we've been dealing with. You don't call your home insurance carrier and say, I need to get my septic tank drained. You don't call them for these things. Right. But then for our own health care, we're expecting our insurance to cover our blood testing other than just the basic three lab tests that our primary care doctor does that doesn't give us any real insight to what's going on internally inside of us. We expect our insurance to pay for our nutrition counseling. Okay, yeah, your insurance is going to pay for you to see a dietitian three times over the next 12 months. What good is that going to do as far as keeping you held accountable and actually giving you the information and the guidance that you need? You can't learn everything about your own personal diet in three visits. It's going to be a cookie cutter meal plan. Absolutely. So the best way to look at this is if you don't make time for your wellness, you will be forced to make time for your illness. Now, that is a high-level, 30,000-foot view of what we're talking about here. If you do not make time for your wellness, you will be forced to make time for your illness. And this is what you and I see in our office, at least on a weekly basis, where you've got all of, we both have all of these really successful people in the business world that are coming in. They've retired CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. These are retired founders. They started a business from nothing and grew it to multi, multi millions national or worldwide businesses. And then all of a sudden, their body gives out on them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know what happened. As soon as I quit working, everything went to crap. Right. Well, yep. no, it didn't just go to crap. You just weren't focusing on what was happening while you were working. Right. Yep. We And we see that all the time. It's like, retiring will kill you. I'm never going to retire. <laughs> but that's not, that's not, that's not what's what actually, it is. That's yeah. not what's happening at all. Right. So if you don't make time for your wellness, you'll be forced to make time for your illness. And now there's nothing going in the right direction as far as health insurance goes. Nothing at all. It is only getting worse, and it's been getting worse since the 1990s. Mm -hmm. There's still, I still occasionally run into PTs who were in practice back in the 80s and 90s, and they re reference the 80s and 90s like my mom will reference the 60s and 70s. It's like, yeah, man, those were the those were the good old days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's horrible now for in-network providers. You just can't do it. Insurance reimbursement has continued to go down across the board for every provider as far as physical therapy, medical, nursing, whatever it is, since the 90s. And so what does that mean to our listeners? The reim Go ahead. That's why your favorite physician is going concierge, because he can't afford to pay his bills anymore. Right. 
Right. They can't afford it. What they're pushing providers have to do, whether it's in primary care or in physical therapy or endocrinology, it doesn't matter the field, they're pushing providers to have to see more and more patients in a day, more patients an hour in order to make the same amount of money that they were making 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 35 years ago. (laughs) Yeah, that's why the people that they'll reference back to the their doctor visits from the 70s and 80s where your doctor would actually spend an hour with you regularly and listen to you and see what's going on. Right now, they've got six minutes max. Usually it's two minutes. They walk in, they barely even look at you. They look at the charts and they say, okay, this is the symptom you're dealing with. Here's the prescription. Make a follow-up appointment. Right. Right. There's not enough time to listen, not enough time to educate. And that's the biggest thing is it's not even the listening issue. It's they don't have the ed- the time to educate the clients on what they could actually do to improve the symptoms that they're having or to educate on nutrition counseling or to educate on physical therapy exercises that they could do. They don't have the time for that. So it's just here's the prescription. It's going to make you at least feel better. Yeah. And and again, we've said this so many times over the past couple of years, it's not because they're being malicious. It's because of the system that they're in. They've got to see X amount of patients per hour per day to generate the revenue it takes to pay the bills. That's another thing, a comment I wanted to make on when individuals think about out of network pricing or they don't take my insurance. Sure. The first thought is, oh, I, I have to pay with my own money. Well, yes. But two, a lot of times they don't recognize that they're not going to get billed $20,000 because that's what they see on their insurance bill, that their insurance bill got paid $20,000 for this visit they just had or the one night hospital stay that they had to have. And that's automatically what clients think about. But that's that's not the pricing that you get when you're in a self-pay or an out-of-network practice, right? It's not even close. And that is a rabbit hole all in itself right there where being in network means that you're only going to get paid a percentage of what you bill the insurance company for the service you just provided to the patient. And in order to get paid what you should be getting paid, you have to bill two or three or four or five or 10 times more than what you would bill somebody who came to you out of network. Mm-hmm. So pay. And so when clients, again, I think it's more of a fear factor of when clients think, oh, you're not going to accept my, my insurance. They just don't understand what the investment actually is. Yes, it's still an investment into your health, but naturally it's going to be less than you would have, your insurance is paying for you. Let's look at it this way, because so many times we, nobody, or we choose not to look at things from a time investment, and we look at it from a monetary investment, meaning that let's just use physical therapy, for example. If somebody calls me up and I tell them we don't take their insurance, they can choose to go somewhere else that does take their insurance. Because that other clinic takes their insurance, that clinic has to see multiple patients per hour. And right out of the gate, your one-on-one time with the treating therapist has just got cut in half immediately, instantaneously. You haven't even showed up for an appointment and your one-on-one time with the treating physical therapist just got cut in half, at least by half, because if they're seeing three patients an hour, then it just got cut by 66%. If they're seeing four patients per hour, it just got cut by 75%. Mm Mm-hmm. Just instantaneously. Right. So now do the math. If it takes me, Jake Berman, 20 hours of one-on-one time to figure out what's wrong with your back and help us together fix the reason why the back pain started in the first place and then make sure that the pain never comes back again. If it takes me 20 hours to do that with somebody... Now go to your in-network physical therapy clinic. You're right out of the gate. You're only going to get 30 minutes max with that therapist. So something that might take me 20 sessions that are an hour long, it's instantaneously going to take you 
40 sessions at the cookie cutter. So we're talking about time. Right. How much is your time worth? Yeah, you saved a couple of thousand dollars of money. Mm -hmm. But what did that cost you? Because it took you six months or 12 months longer to fix the problem. And you, you probably won't even fix it. Right. Right. So you're just kicking the can down the road. You might get some temporary relief and you're like, oh, yeah, my back feels better. And then 18 months later, there's the car accident again. Right. Disc blows out, needs surgery, whatever it is. It's like, what did that really cost you? Mm -hmm. You saved two or three grand? No, you didn't. Right. Right. In the long run, absolutely not. So it's you know, several things that we've touched on so far is just the amount of education that you can get with having more one-on-one -on -one time or longer visits, more of an investment into your health. It's the education. It's the ability to be able to treat problems and not symptoms. And that's something we've talked about in the past, actually, that we haven't even touched on today is the fact that when you're seeing an in-network provider and they're billing insurance, they can only look at you for one thing. So in a primary care world, I went into internal medicine for a little while between switching from Dr. Cedarquist practice to opening my own practice. I went into functional or into internal medicine in the hospital. And if I had a patient schedule to come in and see me for a urinary tract infection, they come in the office, we do their urine, they have the urinary tract infection. I go in there, I'm talking to them about the treatment and they say, oh, by the way, can you check my ear? I'm having some ear pain. I would have to tell them, no, I'm sorry, I can't look at your ear because that's not why you were scheduled today. Because of insurance, you're going to have to go back to the scheduling counter and get back on my schedule for another day. You can't even come back today. Come back on another day so that I can look at your ear because this is what you scheduled for and this is what insurance is going to pay for today only. I couldn't even help them with whatever else they needed help with because of what insurance was telling me that I could help with. And you have the same problem with physical therapy. If they go in for a referral for their back pain, that therapist cannot look at their hip. It can They cannot look at their feet. They have to only stick to the back and treatment for the back versus with you guys, you're able to actually look and say, okay, your back is hurting but it might actually be coming from your hip or it might be coming from your feet. You can figure out where the problem is and treat the problem, not just the symptom. Exactly. I think a good summary to say about all this is insurance dictates the care that you'll get because the provider will only give you the interventions that are covered by insurance. It's that simple. I rem I'll never forget it. The last clinic that I worked at that was in network this is no fault of the owner at all. This was just the, the situation. I remember that I was billing units. I forget what it was. I was billing either manual therapy or, yeah, it must have been manual therapy. And this particular insurance reimbursed more for neuromuscular education, I think is what it was. So these are just codes that you bill for the actual intervention that you should be doing or should have done. And he goes, why are you billing X amount of units of manual therapy versus X amount of units of neuromuscular education? Don't hold me to these codes because I don't remember. This was 10 years ago. But I do remember that I was billing more units of the lower priced item than the higher priced item. And I said, well, that's what I did. And he looks at me and he goes, well, maybe you don't need to do that much of it. And you could do a little bit more of this other thing. And I, I just couldn't understand it. I'm like, the patient doesn't need that though. And he's like, are you sure? I mean, the way I see it, they could actually benefit way more if we did it this way. And again, this is no fault, no fault of his own. And he is very right in hindsight. Now that I'm a business owner and I see all these things, they're would have been no difference in the patient outcome had I chosen to do this one thing versus the other thing because it really didn't matter at the end of the day. I had to see multiple patients per hour. So it didn't matter to the patient. What it mattered to was the business. Right. 
And I'm going, what the hell is the point of this? Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be doing this for the patient. But at the end of the day, the, it doesn't do the patient any better or any worse, whether I choose this or that. And I'm going, this just does not make any sense at all. And my brain was in a pretzel. I'm going, this is not right. Mm-hmm. This is a broken system. And now I'm looking at the business owner being stressed out every other payroll going, where's the money going to come from? Because the insurance didn't reimburse us for all of those visits, whatever it was. Yeah. It's something that we talk about regularly on this podcast. I mean, we've, we've said similar things on past podcasts, but it's just the the point that you have to find the provider that's go that is able to do the right thing for you. Not only can do it, but is actually able to do the right thing for you. Treat your problems, not just treating the symptoms. Have the time for the education. Yes. It's going to require you to invest in your health. If you want to avoid illness, if you don't make time for your wellness today, you will be forced to make time for your illness later. There is no way around it. That's it. Yep. I agree with that. Good? Yeah. Happy? What else? Was that it? Yeah, we're already at 25 minutes. Oh my goodness. Time flies. See what happens when we're all jacked up. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So make sure that you like and subscribe this podcast. Leave us some reviews. We should get start getting some more reviews on this thing to help us spread the word a little bit more on this. Share this episode with somebody else that is hardcore, maybe a family member or a parent that's like, we're not going anywhere else because this is our in-network provider. Okay. Well, I'll see you sooner or later. Right. You can't outrun me forever. (laughs) I'm not going anywhere. Go to the cookie cutters RS down the road. I'll be here a year or two down the road when it doesn't hold. That's right. (laughs) We'll see you when you come back around. Good. All right. Ciao for now. All right. Thank you for subscribing on your social media and podcast platforms to The Berman Method. Dr. Jake Berman with Berman Physical Therapy and Jenny Berman, Physician Assistant with Berman Health and Wellness. You can find more information on our website, www.bermanpt.com for physical therapy, bermanpt.com forward slash wellness for the health and wellness. You can also find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and on your website podcast platform. So be sure to follow us, like us, subscribe to us. And if you would like any further information, definitely visit our website and reach out to us. You may also find our free reports on the websites as well, where you can download this free information for yourself. Have a great day.